hat to to this audience. Now, it has it start usually with motor function like chorea and uh, dementia uh, and uh, some uh, psychiatric symptom, etc. And the reason of this is because the CAG trinucleotide expansion of a gene called Huntington. Now, um, usually this disease onset occurs at midlife and uh, the life spans after the onset is usually 20 years. Now, throughout this period, um, it usually has, in addition to the motor disorder, it also has a uh, symptoms like psychosis, cognitive dysfunction, and weight loss. Now, um, we all know that at this time that currently there's really very limited treatment for it. Uh, for example, for Korea, we have TBZ, but for others, really there's nothing. But if we look at the, uh, the atrophy of the brain, you will find that the major uh, affected area is in the cortex. Uh, and also probably in the substantial nigra. Now, the reason that many people are actually working on it is because this is kind of a, a, a model disease for many brain diseases. And therefore, uh, focusing on rare disease as such, not just benefit the patient, also would actually help uh, the treatment, to develop a treatment for more common disease. Now, if we look at the disease causing phenotype, you will find that actually the CAG repeat up here, uh, it would allow the protein to actually form aggregates. When the CAG repeat is longer than 36 repeat, all these mutant hunting team will become oligomeriform, uh, fiber form, and aggregates. Now, the functions include, it would enter the brain, uh, the, the nuclei, and what happened is that it would interfere with the gene expressions. Uh, for example, many gene are, uh, transcription factors are affected. Now, in addition to that, um, it also would interfere with the transport of many important neurotrophic factor, such as BDNF. Another very important thing is mitochondria, that because this protein would sit on uh, the outer membranes of mitochondria and cause a dysfunction of mitochondria. Another interesting thing is that it would also interfere with the protein degradation profile, and therefore proteosome and even autophagy would be affected. Now, if you look at the figure here, you would naturally think that how about antisense oligo? Yes, that's actually what people are thinking about, and it's kind of a trend at this time. Now, so starting many years ago, that people already look at uh, the possibility, and they are today, there are many, many different approaches that we can do this. For example, we could actually do CRISPR to remove it. Another more common thing also catch a lot of attention is antisense oligo. And this is one of the clinical uh, study that I have been following for years and was really impressed. Um, they've been testing in animal, they test, they even find a really good uh, biomarker from CSF, et cetera, and then start with phase one and phase two, um, starting uh, maybe much earlier than 2018, starting from uh, 2015, they already designed a very nice, uh, basically a design. So putting an antisense oligo into uh, the spinal uh, spaces by in, uh, intrathecal injections. So a couple of years ago, there's a patient uh, just mentioned that she has been feeling really depressed all her life, but now she, because of this, she felt so hopeful. So starting in 2019, Roche, one of the biggest big pharma start uh, the clinical trial. So people been uh, looking forward to it. And although uh, 2020 is a year of pandemic, they spend lots of time and really accumulate 800 patients of Huntington disease for a clinical trial. Now you may say that 800 really is not a lot, but for rare disease, it's very, very uh, rare. Actually, this is the largest uh, clinical trial that I have observed so far. Now, a week ago, there's a really a very sad news. Now, the reason being, um, this, is, uh, this assay was uh, conducted by one of the best by Big Pharma, 
they accumulated 800 patients with a three arm clinical trial. <laughs> The whole, the whole study actually were done in 18 countries, more than the 100 clinical sites. It's really a tremendous effort. They have collected all the patients and for this 25 months clinical trial uh, and will be finished uh, from uh, a year from now. But one week ago, uh, the, co um, the company actually announced that they have to hold, not just hold, they have to stop the whole clinical trial. Now, the reason being there is a very important com um, committee called uh, Independent yeah. Data Monitoring Committee. They only care for two things. One is for the safety, the other is for the risk benefit calculation. And it appears at this time, not even the company knows what happens. It's just the committee look at the data and they decide it is not worth of continuing. So they just stop it. And it's not a safety concern. So is likely to be a risk benefit. Now, if you look uh, in the websites, patients are just uh, getting really upset because the question is, what's next? It will be a very serious problem and we won't know until maybe um, a couple of months later when people have the chance to look at the data and see whether there is an opportunity to actually redesign. But at this time, is there anything that people can do? Does this mean that the hunting team lowering strategy is no good? Probably not. I think at this time that the um, clinicians and patients and their families are waiting uh, to see what happens. And today, what I would like to tell you is one possibility is look at the one uh, very important and interesting about urgent dysfunctions of Huntington disease. Now to this audience, uh, you, we all know that GABA uh, system basically is inhibitory. The reason being um, for the GABA A receptors, when it open, it would allow the enters of, of chloride and then actually um, make hyperpolarizations uh, and inhibition. Now, uh, the GABA uh, GABA family is actually the agonist, uh, antagonist, modulator being, have been used in clinics to treat uh, many things, for example, like sleep, like anxiety, et cetera. Now, for people that actually have GABA deficiency, they also have many symptoms that uh, you will see in clinics. Now, um, the interesting part is that if you look at these symptoms and you look at all those in red, those are the symptoms overlap with Huntington disease. So when we start to look at this project, um, Dr. Xu Yiting, uh, she at that time was a uh, in uh, attending physicians in a uh, China Medical uh, University. And we start to look at this question and we ask, is it possible that uh, the GABA allergic system in Huntington disease really has problem. And the way uh, we started from the Huntington's animal model. Now, um, this is one of the summary of one of her earlier study that uh, we found that indeed that if we look into the brains of the uh, uh, Huntington's mice and also patient, we'll find that the two protein levels being significantly reduced. One is GABA A receptors, and the other is the KCC2 uh, expression. Now, these would affect the GABA allergic system as we earlier predicted. And the impact is that some of the GABA allergic related drug might be used to treat the symptom. So, in that earlier study, we suggest that if the patients uh, they are treated with GABA related drug, it might be important to uh, realize that they could be less sensitive uh, to drugs that aim at GABA A receptor. And we think this is probably important for the uh, for taking care of Huntington patient. Now, however, uh, when we further look into this question, uh, we realize that they are not just only GABA A receptor as shown in here, which allow chloride to enter, and not just KCC2, which will pump chloride out, this whole system is important for GABA's function. Now, uh, important thing, another important thing is that there is a very uh, important transporter called NKCC1. This one would allow uh, chloride to enter the cell. Now, so uh, we start to look into this question and uh, we ask whether 
uh, NKCC1 would contribute to the global dysfunction in Huntington disease. So the first experiment we did is very straightforward. We took a common uh, Huntington's mouse model called R62, shown in here, and we took the striatum, look at the Y type and R62's western, and we found that the expressions of NKCC1 was elevated. This is interesting, particularly because it really, uh, the increase of NKCC1 uh, in significantly enhanced through age, indicating that it's probably disease related. So here is the age and the levels of NKCC1 is enhanced. Now, in order to demonstrate that this occurred in neuron, so we took the synap uh, synaptophysing fraction that are uh, indicating specifically for the synapse parts, and we look at the protein expression, and again, that we found the expression of NKCC1 is elevated. So NKCC1 really was increased in Huntington's mouse model, but this is just one mouse model. Is it uh, uh, is it the real one? Is it authentic? So we took another uh, mouse model here uh, called Huntington's, uh, uh, this is a knocking model uh, called 150Q. If we took a striatum and we would uh, find, again, that NKCC1 level is enhanced, uh, the, uh, but most important is what happens in human brain. So this is a brain section. We uh, stand for NKCC1, and we found the levels of NKCC1 is also slightly increased in Huntington disease brain particularly in neuron. We also look at the, uh, the transcript level in the brains of Huntington's patient. We also found an increase of NKCC1. So this is a real thing, but does it have functional importance? Luckily that we have a very important collaborator, Dr. Lian Zhengzhang, who is now giving a lecture in another section. His lab is a, a is really excellent in doing electrophysiology. So what happened is that they look at the GABA mediate chloride current, as I mentioned to you, that the GABA uh, receptor when open, allow the uh, chloride to enter. If we look at the E-GABA value, the blue line indicate the Y type, the red line indicate the uh, HD. So it gradually increased throughout the age, so it's uh, disease uh, related and age dependent. What about the mechanism? Remember that I told you this happens in neuron. So we took another animal model. This animal model expressed the disease causing Newton Huntington specifically in neuron. We were very surprised. At the late stage of uh, the disease, there's no change in the NKCC1. So what happens? Now, could it be possible that other cell type would involve? For example, how about astrocyte? So what we did is that um, we uh, postulate that because means the hunting team also expressed in astrocyte. So what we did is that we took another uh, uh, animal model and this model only expressed mutant hunting team in uh, astrocyte and we found no change in their expression when these animals were uh, young. However, when they're getting older, at the age of uh, 16, uh, 18 months, you will find uh, the NKCC1 level is higher. Another interesting thing is that if, it, if you cross these two lines and allow the mutant hunting team to express in both neuron and astrocyte and look at the uh, NKCC1 level, you'll find them significantly increase even at a very young age. So we believe that astrocyte plays a very important role. Uh, what role? Could it be neural inflammation? So here we took a cell line. We're using a striatal cell line called STHQ7, uh, and we add uh, TNF-alpha to increase the inflammation, and you found the western level uh, of NKCC1 is significantly increased. So this is inflammation-related. If this is inflammation-related, can we test whether this is important? So what we did is that uh, uh, we took uh, another drug called uh, Xprof. This prox is very interesting. It's a neg dominant negative inhibitor specific for soluble TNF-alpha. 
Now, the only thing is that it cannot pass the, uh, the BBB. So what we did is that we put a pump into, uh, allow the drug into ICV, into the brain. So we did this a few years ago, and we realized that. Now, uh, let's look at the rotary performance up here. Now, this is the rotary performance to demonstrate the motor function, and uh, the black line here is the wild type. The red line is a disease animal model, and the blue line is when we inject uh, this X probe to reduce neuroinflammation. So we believe this uh, drug probably is useful. So what we did is that if we um, if we perfuse this drug into the brain to reduce neuroinflammation, we would find the NKCC1 level is uh, significantly reduced, indicating that truly NKCC1 expression is mediated by neuroinflammation. Okay. Now, but is this functionally important? So we did another thing is to uh, find a drug because there could be many drugs uh, already being used in clinic that might be able to uh, inhibit NKCC1. Here's a drug, very interesting, because eating uh, is uh, a condition. So she suggests that, well, how about that we use this one? This one already being used to treat a heart failure or a neonatal seizure. So we did two types of assay. One type is for the clasping. We uh, put up uh, the animals and uh, measure the clasping score. And uh, the disease animal will show very high score. But if we treat the animal, uh, uh, we'll find that their, uh, uh, their clasping score was significantly reduced. And we put, it, we put this drug just through IP. This is also true for rotary performance to look at the motor function as shown in here. Now, surprisingly, the blue line indicating the treated animal that uh, indeed their, uh, their rotary performance can be significantly improved uh, from the red line, which is uh, the disease animal. So this suggests that maybe NKCC1 is truly an important uh, drug target. But while we are thinking about that, we were also suggested that um, this could be other uh, function. Uh, so we also look at other more uh, di uh, disease-related uh, analysis. For example, we look at the aggregates. So here we look at the brain section, look at the uh, mutant hunting team aggregate. We measure the aggregate uh, numbers and size. And we find that uh, in Huntington's animal, the size of the mutant hunting team can be reduced by this drug. So NKCC1 is important. We also collaborate with Dr. Lian Zhenjiang uh, to look at the, uh, the uh, GABA, uh, eGABA. So here is the data. As uh, you can see here that uh, indeed that for Huntington's animal model, the eGABA is higher than the wild type. And this eGABA value can be reduced by, tre uh, by treating with the NKCC1 inhibitor. Now, the last thing we did is to really make sure that NKCC1 is important. So here that uh, we uh, put the SH uh, RNA of NKCC1, uh, put pack them into AAV, inject into the brain, and look at their behavior. So for the clasping effects down here, uh, we found that NKCC1 suppression would reduce the uh, clasping score it would also improve the rotary performance up here, and therefore uh, suggesting, again, that NKCC1 is an important drug target. So this is our summary uh, report that basically we find usually that uh, in the GABAergic neuron, GABAergic receptor is important. It highly depends on NKCC1 and KCC2. However, in the presence of mutant hunting team, what happened is that the GABA A receptor will be reduced. Uh, their NKCC2 receptor uh, uh, expression will be reduced, and NKCC1 level will be increased. And all these will contribute to the Huntington symptom and also the pathogenesis. So we we suggest that uh, GABA allergy dysfunction is very important for uh, HD progressions. And uh, uh, probably in the future that treating patient with GABA-A receptor-related drugs uh, 
we need to be more careful on that because they could be more less sensitive to that. And NKCC1 is a potential drug target. So I would like to uh, thank all the people that contribute to it, in addition to Yi Ting and Ya Ting, uh, and also uh, people from Academicenica, from National Yangming University and China Medical University. Thank you. I would like to take questions and feedbacks. Okay. Uh, thanks for uh, Professor Chen's uh, excellent talk. Any questions from the floor? 